So we are here to look at sustainable fashion in this area that's called Aesthetica. It's all sponsored by Monsoon, which is really quite a um, household name in England and a big chain. But it encompasses people who've got big sustainable businesses, people who use fair trade cotton, and people who are tiny little businesses who want to make something of the green world. Indeed. I mean, Aesthetica started in September 2006, and it was an originally an initiative of the British Fashion Council. We, um, myself and my partner, curate it. We've been in sustainable fashion for the last 10 years. And basically, we just felt that the time was right to present sustainability as what it could be rather than what it always has been. So as a kind of major designer force, as a kind of major innovation within the industry rather than camping gear. What we showcase here is not just brands that are here to save the planet. We are here to sell clothes. We aim at the same wardrobes as most of the other traditional designers. It's very exciting because it's a green image, but at the same time it's a fashion image. Tell us about that. That was really the way that we wanted to present sustainable fashion. I mean, we were rather um, bored with this kind of pre-concept that sustainable fashion is hemp sacks and, you know, uncomfortable, itchy socks. Because having been in sustainability for 10 years, we knew that there was more exciting things coming along. So we approached the British Fashion Council saying, let's do it differently. Let's do it fashion. Let's do it in a way that we can show exactly where the movement is going. A lot of people have different approaches, and your own approach, it's the idea of being able to find fabrics that haven't been used, they're sort of wasted before they're even made into anything. Have I understood that correctly? Absolutely. It, it's a, it, traditional recycling is more to do with you know, reconstructing old garments. We went to the source. We thought, how can we get the most beautiful fabrics at the cheapest possible price so that we can afford to run a fashion business? Hence, we found that the best way to do that was by using what we now called either verging recycling or pre-consumer waste, meaning that we use everything that everybody else abandons after their production. Let's have a look round at the different stands here. I know I'm not going to find old sandals. I know I'm not going to find recycled hemp clothes because you've told me that. But what is there here that's going to draw a customer? Mark Liu, you've got here the kind of clothes that nobody would think were organic or green. They look very stylish. They look beautiful workmanship. But what is it about them? It's zero waste. Zero waste. Um, I basically turned the whole of tailoring upside down to make garments that fit together like a jigsaw piece. So nothing is wasted in the end. And you have to reconsider everything that you're going to do from the very beginning. And we come up with this. <laughs> So I want to understand this. You mean that you take the fabric here and you say, I want to have these frills on here, but I don't want to waste it. So you think of a way with the pattern of putting it to fill out every little bit of fabric so you're not throwing anything away. Is that right? Yes, these frills sort of interlink together. So mm -hmm. it, this, if we were to take this around, it would just be a giant rectangle on the end. And all garments here like that. Everything from something like a basic dress to very yeah. intricate details. I've always thought that nobody wanted to waste the fabric because, after all, it costs money. But you're telling me that there's a lot of waste in industrial uh, making of clothes, and in this way you actually can counteract that. Well, in every garment, about 15% of the waste is created in every single garment, so that's a very considerable saving, 15% per garment. You think about mass production where they're doing thousands of them. So um, I'm starting the research almost from the top end of how we would change the industry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Elena, you're one of four people who have been chosen for one day only to exhibit what you can do. Here's your big chance. You now have to tell the world of the International Herald Tribune. What have you done for sustainable fashion? Okay, well, thank you. Uh, yes, we have been one of the designers chosen by the Ethical Fashion Forum to represent them. My label is Fisher Garcia. I am Elena Garcia and I have my partner, Ilya Fisher, and we both do uh, organic silk garments. I've got two here. And basically, we control every single part of the process in the making of these garments. We buy them uh, from uh, India and China, and they have no pesticides at any stage during the production of silk. 
uh, and then we actually do all the making and the embellishment in the UK. And we have uh, we work with organisations to do the embellishment. We work with the Heba Women's Project in Brick Lane to do this kind of cart work where we use all our scraps to apply the satin panels of scrap onto the silk chiffon. Then we embroider and then we cut around it and we dye the whole thing with metal-free, low-impact dyes in England as well. Here is a little problem, isn't it? It's like when you go to buy organic eggs in the supermarket. They're always that bit more expensive. But do organic clothes have to be expensive or do you deliberately want to concentrate on high-end, very beautiful things? Yeah, we do, because uh, we don't think, personally, Ilya and I don't think that a garment has enough selling power just because it's organic. We think it needs to have enough power in itself as a product to be able to draw attention to buyers. People are not just going to spend money on something because it's organic. Uh, and also with the you know the cheap fashion, I think people have kind of mental uh, prices in their heads about how much they're prepared to pay for a T-shirt. So we thought we can't compete with China, you know, and the big manufacturers. So we're going to make something so beautiful that people want to buy it no matter what. So this is a whole new area, green couture. Thank Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for showing me this beautiful work. Thank you work. so much. Thank you. Now, Rosie, I want to ask you about shoes because most people think that green shoes are sandals and, you know, people walk around in these ugly shoes. There's also a misconception, I think, that to be green, a shoe has to be not made at all of animal hide. But none of these things are true, are they? No, no, they're not. There's a lot of concern um, as regards to where the leather comes from, but you can get lots of amazing organic leathers. We use vegetable tan leathers, which are tanned with the extracts of vegetable oils, and um, we use some amazing recycled leather called e-leather, which is a byproduct. So there's, there's some great methods out there, that, and we're hopefully using a lot of them in, in our shoes. Do you feel now that people are thinking about their feet and their shoes? Because, you know, we've all heard about sustainable clothing, but this is something different again. Is it something that's really growing in importance? Yes, I think so. I think people are getting really disconcerted about buying a pair of shoes and that, that they only last for, for two months and the heel falls off and then there's nothing, they can't be repaired. When you use toxic glues in shoes, when the heel breaks off because the glue is is um, perished, you can't fix it back together again. So people are getting a lot more aware of where their products are made and how they're made and what they're made from, and hopefully also about the treatment of the people that are, that are making the products as well. Thank you for telling us about Terra Plana. Thanks. Thanks. Um, again, you know, we're not a political force, we're a design force. It just so happens that most of us like to go to bed at night thinking that we have given something rather than just taken. Ursula de Castro, thank you for talking to the International Herald Tribune. Thank you very much for asking me.